Hey, good morning, kids. Hey, I guess you guys all fired up this morning and you're understanding. In fact, I'll tell you what you do. Uh, go back. There's a power of memory. Go back and think about all the seeds that you guys have sown uh, that you just forgot about. You know, you just did it out of goodness, the kindness of your heart. Well, you know, maybe you did, but God have not forgotten those particular seeds. And, and uh, one day he just kept them and, and maybe just held it back from your memory because God can do stuff like that. He can hide stuff from you, okay, uh, until an appropriate time. And uh, then he'll remind you one day, he says, listen, you got that because remember that seed way back there you sowed? You forgot all about it, but he never did. And I'm telling you, he works like that. Here's another example of what I'm trying to get you guys to really fully understand uh, this week when we're talking about the power of seeds and making divine connections uh, with God because everything belongs to the Lord. We're, we're great stewards, and I pray that you're a great steward, you know. When I honor my Lord with what belongs to him, okay, uh, then he begins to bring me those connections that I need, uh, appointments that I need uh, with people to bless my life or to change my life or to make things happen. And sometimes people do things for us that they're not after a certain uh, reward. They just do it because they love to do things. They love to help people, you know. My wife and I think we're probably in ministry because of something we said many years ago down in Carmel Church one day coming home, that we just wanted to be a blessing to God's people. Well, you know, we can't bless all of God's people, but we certainly have blessed a lot, okay? And so uh, you never know how powerful a seed might be until it's sown. Once it's sown, well, I'm telling you right now, you know, uh, you can count the seeds in an apple, but only God can count the apples in, in the seeds. And I can tell you that, that's, that's a powerful thing. We look in uh, 1 Kings chapter 17. Again, my seed having the capability of connecting to the Lord and then sustaining me or bringing me that which I'm going to need. And it comes through a person entering into my life. Okay? A person entering into my life. All right? Somewhere and somehow, and it's not listed in Scripture, Somewhere, I believe that this lady had thought about the Lord God. This lady had somewhere heard something or whatever, uh, because she's living in, in Zidon, which was the city of Jezebel, uh, you know, who was uh, at that time the queen married to Ahab. And uh, the and sh picture shows you that God knows how to hide you right in your enemy's camp, and they don't even see you. <laughs> That's powerful. But uh, this lady, all right, has an assignment from God before Elisha meets her. All right, and here we go. It says this, Elijah went to the brook, ravens fed him, in verse 8. And the word of the God, Lord came to him saying, Arise, get thee to Seraphat, which belonged to Zidon. All right, and he says, And dwell there, behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So somewhere along the line, that lady had sown a seed somewhere to God. Somewhere in there. The scripture ain't telling us all of it, but it is showing us that the Lord had picked out or given this woman, okay, a, an appointment with his man, Elisha. This is what it's showing us, okay? Because the Lord is telling Elisha, all right? And we know how God called those things which be not as though they were until they are. We know how he does that. He summons things. This is what you and I need to learn about speaking the word of God. And it says, he arose, so he arose and went to Seraphat. When he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink it. She didn't fuss and she didn't fight. Is this amazing? She didn't know who he was. But what did she do? As she was going to fetch it, a little water. This is drought time. <laughs> a little water. He called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth. Excuse me? She had to know something about the Lord somewhere. Somebody, she heard something. You know, it's like the woman who came up behind Jesus. She had heard about him. And guess what? When she came up behind him, she connected to him. All right? 
And this woman, some kind of way, has heard something about the Lord because she says, as the Lord thy God liveth, all right, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise, and behold, I'm gathering two sticks that, it, that, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we might eat it and die. And look what Elisha says to her. Elijah tells her, fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me a cake thereof, a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after that, for thee and for thy son. For thus says the Lord, oh boy, look at this, this revival to the house, okay? Revival to the house. Go make for me first, give it to me, bring it here first, and then look what he says. Now this woman, all she had was a handful of meal, and all of a sudden, this handful of meal now becomes this by the word of God. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal. Oh, some of you are going to get that, right? Not, not a handful anymore. That's all she had. But because she was willing to take that seed and again, sow it, she was connecting to the God of Elisha. Okay? Because she said, as a, she says, as the Lord thy God lives, I've heard about him, and I believe, but don't mean he's my God, okay? I've heard about him. I've heard he's done great things. You know, history has it that a lot of people heard about God. Rahab heard about the Lord, you know? Everybody hears about the great things that God do. But she says this, and then he says, well, you've heard this, so I'm here. Now do this. Bring this to me as a seed. And that little seed that she gave him, that little handful, she made a little cake for him first, and then for her and her son. And then guess what? The word says, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord send rain upon the earth. I hope you guys are getting that because that little seed connected her, all right, with, with the person who came into her life that bought her everything that she would need. Just like with Cornelius, here's revival in this house. This lady, she eats for years three and a half years, it says. She eats for years with Elijah and her son, even her son being raised a little later on. Why? Because the power of that seed that she sowed, it opened up things between her and God and her and Elisha and her and her destiny. For the next few years, she wasn't concerned or worried about where her next meal was going to come from. Isn't that, that's, that's, that's very powerful, all right? So please understand that you're sowing, and the enemy knows this. He's seen, he's seen all this stuff go on. He was right there when all this went on. Please know that that seed that you've sown in that little kid's life, or you paid for that child going to school, or whatever, you bought those meals for those people that were hungry and were homeless, or you bought those clothes for those kids who, you know, didn't have anything on, didn't have any shoes. Let me tell you something. God's looking at your seed. You connected to him. But he's also going to divinely appoint somebody to come in your life and bless you when you need it. God bless you. we see you here tomorrow morning on Daily Bread.